back again with the mailbag, Ask the Know-All. And you got lots of questions. Oh, yes. Really? You're popular. Mm -hmm. All right. People okay, love see. you. I'm glad that you love me. I love you, too. My mission here uh, involves the big love, which is awareness. Yeah. Professor Lorca asks you, how can one go to the unknown to collect new information? Do you mean that art, which is only in the known, isn't art? We did a, we did a show, and I think it was a, a question that I, I maybe was not really specific about well, what is art, what isn't art. And I, I did categories. And uh, it was like a you know, hierological yeah, level of it. art with like the good Tolteca art on the top and yeah. maybe some Hallmark cards uh, towards the middle, maybe. Well, even those Hallmark cards can have the intent of the Toltecs. And I make cards for everybody all year round with the intention that it moves their assemblage points. So the medium is flexible from stone building to, you know, uh, occasion cards. But what I think this uh, person is asking, Professor Lorca, um, how do you get to the unknown? What methods do you use? Well, there's as many methods as there are in the walls in order to get this information. And they use all sorts of radical techniques. There's obviously burying in the ground. They're suspending yourself off the air so the Earth's emanations are not as affecting you. And there's the tube, there's sex dreaming. There's actual uh, uh, deprivation out on a power spot. Um, there's painful rituals. There's rituals where the, the human body is, is asked to endure things beyond its normal capacities. This is also mirrored in like Native American rituals like the sun dance where the, the chests are pierced. So throughout the years, the shamans have given to the tribe methods to get information from the unknown if they're artists. If they're not artists, just the gift of the sexuality of sex streaming to the general populace is meant for them to exercise their energy doubles in a pleasurable act that then will prepare them for leaving first in their dreaming and then later at death. So all these methods are ways to get information from the unknown and I use all of them. So in other words, this path is not about technique, new brushes, and ways to maybe uh, experiment with new paints. It's really how we can use whatever means are available that appear as omens. So maybe a piece of cardboard comes up in a, in a dumpster and the omen that I was thinking about at the time was a different type of material to paint on. I will immediately jump on that. I formulate a lot of things that happen based on things that occur in dreaming and in the tonale. And that is an unending source of materials, and you're making a bridge to an audience. The big question is, well, who are you painting for? Painting for other sorcerers? Who are you sculpting for? Sculpting for other magicians? Who are you giving art exhibits for? The general population. In that midst of that population, there are magicians, there are young seers, there are kids who need to get some other information than the known. And those are the ones that, in the bigger sense, we always hope to reach. Who are the future great transmitters of the intention, the highest intention of the artist, which is to move the assemblage point into a spiritual frame of reference that allows them to see and hear in a broader manner? Okay. Well, Orange asks you, or says and asks, Van Gogh, was a seer. He sought energy, that is obvious. And I like your perspective that he reached the unknowable. Insane people do not control the shifts in their assemblage point. Sorcerers do. I like your perspective about artists as conduits for bringing people to the mystery. And when I think of it, true, all the religions use art to depict the, pirate, the spirit some more literal and some more abstract. Can you show an example of your art that deeply translates spirit? That brings us to the part of the show where we 
have uh, a little bit of a giveaway, a little bit of a question and answer. Behind me is, and uh, PQ, is a painting. It has a specialized transmission that's occurring there and it's a person sitting in the tonal surrounded by a circle of energy that creates a portal. If you look very carefully, if you zoom in, there are mysterious lines happening of a serpiente and a conduit through the bottom and eventually a flying disc at the top and three stars that represent the belt of Orion. So this painting has different levels. You can look at it as someone sitting, you can look at it as a portal, and if you look deeper and deeper, you will get the more mystical input added in order to move the assemblage point even further. So look deeper. And next we have, don't mind me, Uh, this is a question on your talk on about Carlos Castaneda. Actually, I think that was program three or four? Three. Three, okay. What did Carlos look like at the lecture, and what is your book, American Shaman, all about, and why did you want Carlos to have it? Such a great, happy question for me, because I'll do a recapitulation live here. I haven't thought about that in years. The... Um, the appearance of Carlos was important for one reason. I could say, oh, he's short, he has uh, gray hair, all those things. But when he came out on stage, he did something that is very Nawal. He came out and he just stood there frozen with this expression. You see, you were expecting a lecture. This is the professorial pose if you are giving a lecture. It is. So at that moment, he was moving the assemblage point. And in all of the Nawal activities, they are all about doing that first and foremost. So the expected Carlos Castaneda escalated, and he said to everybody there, I am Carlos Castaneda. <laughs> Which, of course, put a lot of doubt in people's minds at the time. Well, especially you know? since he had always been this mysterious, <laughs> right. unseen... Right, and this could be another actor. Yeah. Very good movement. Again, taking people into awareness. Why I wanted to give him my book. I'd written a book. This was in the early 90s, and it was all about um, my adventures in a power spot called The Ridge. The title of the book was American Shaman. I actually was not as involved with Toltec at the time when I wrote that. It was behind the scenes and all the little pieces were coming together, but I hadn't found my benefactor or he hadn't found me yet. So what I was doing there was saying, well, a regular man, a father in suburbia, could participate in finding a power spot and have all these magical occurrences. So I, I titled it American Shaman, meaning that a contemporary person could be activated. Later, it became the Tolteca path when my benefactor explained things to me. But I wanted to give that book, American Shaman, to Carlos at the time. It, for me, was something that I believed would be seen instantly as a product of a Nawal. And he would look at it and he would say to me, my young man, where have you been for all my infinity? All right, our next question from Professor Lorca again. Wow, thank you. In all the time I spent combing through the books and what information I could find about Carlos, never did I hear about any of this. It was very enlightening, except I didn't want to hear about Carlos's fate being chased. I hope he found a way to shift his assemblage point in space and reach Don Juan or the Dome. As far as a question, I'd like to hear more about sex dreaming, as you mentioned it, as something that Carlos missed. And even I can tell you, the first place you want to go is the wonderful book by Vega. Yes, Anthony Flores Vega has a book out called Sex Dreaming, and that could explain uh, Obviously, I don't have all the time to do it's that. It's a matter of time, and we are on a uh, conveyance known as YouTube, 
who uh, capriciously can decide what you can or can't discuss and what words you can or can't use. So once you start talking about that sex well, stuff, they, um, they get nervous. What, what sex streaming is, though, it's a Toltec technique of putting the two bookends of most people's uh, abilities that take them out of the known, which is a good sexual experience and a good dreaming experience. So sex dreaming utilizes those techniques that are common to most people and takes them to the height of a discipline. It's a difficult discipline because the sorcerers devise these things, first and foremost for sorcerers who are intent on using their energy to leave the known world by activating the physical equal to the dreaming body that discipline splits your cognition and your awareness as soon as you split your cognition you end up in a third position which is called the third attention out of the first attention which is the tonal and the known second attention the unknown third intention happens when you have left and are in other real practical worlds so sex dreaming is a very important technique now we're saying why carlos did not use that i can't tell either he was not aware of it that his benefactor don juan told him about it but throughout the books there's mention that carlos has a problem with sexuality one of the first was when he found out that he would have women from the four directions he immediately thought ah four women that i can have as my wives immediately don juan and the other circles got rid of that idea and put him through other hardships. His sexuality was always in question and possibly he, although he might have known about it, he was unable to participate. Although the books have great moments where all the witches are in a dark room, they get Carlos naked, all these things are sex dreaming techniques and situations. But I'm assuming that Carlos, he was already having trouble with CIA for mentioning drug use, <clears throat> that if he brought in another difficult topic that he might be again in trouble and he was trying to erase his personal history. So let's go from the, the premise that he had sex dreaming experiences throughout the books. They were hinted at, but he preferred to leave that at a later date because it's, it's, a, it's a very difficult discipline. And uh, for him, uh, he probably found it uh, e equally so. Uh, and once again, we've had the privilege of hearing your thoughts. And uh, if you've got questions, if this, uh, anything arose in your mind that you need clarification of, down there in the comments, ask us. And we'll be back soon with the answers you so desire. <laughs>